Hello everybody, I'm Nora Burrows. I'm back with episode two of turning a fabric panel into a quilt. If you haven't checked out episode one, where we take the fabric panel, cut it up into squares and rectangles, and go check that out. Today we are gonna take those pieces and I have some ideas about how to situate them to make interesting patterns and just make this look visually attractive. So let's go ahead and do that. Here are the pieces that we cut up, and I initially was thinking that I was gonna put these deers kind of as a central point, but I have so many of them that I think I'd prefer to use them as a border. And I'm gonna start with this piece here. I have a bunch of these, and I have some ideas about how to lay this out. So here is the pattern that I'm thinking of, and so this would be the very center of the quilt. And then I have this kind of plum colored material. This is not a quilting cotton. I'm not sure what this is. To me, this feels kind of like wool, but I'm not sure. One of the cool things I'm excited about for this quilt is that I want to use various types of fabric and to see how that works, how, how that comes together and if it does work. So I'm thinking of adding this fabric here as kind of a stripe in between a sashing in between each one of these pieces. So I'm gonna cut some strips. So this was incredibly easy. These squares are not attached yet, but let me tell you what I did. So in order to make this kind of pattern, what I realized is I needed each one of these pieces to be a square. So I measured the length, in this case it was seven and a half inches, and then I added enough border onto each side to also be seven and a half inches wide. So now it's a square. Once it's a square, you just place them. So if these are all facing, you know, up and down, once you have all of your squares, you just turn every other one to go the opposite way like this. And then I will sew these pieces together. I will lose quite a bit of these borders in the seam allowance so that's kind of a bummer but i think it'll still look cool and then i'm going to do a border around the edge here of the wool this kind of purple stripe wool and then i'll keep adding and making bigger using other parts of the fabric panel from there this is all sewn together in one piece now i think it's looking pretty good you can see where these seams come together uh, the wool is a little bit tricky to deal with in terms of sewing it to the cotton only because it gets a little bit bulky because it's so much thicker. But besides that, I really like it. I think it is probably a wool poly blend um, just because the, the way that it's interacting with my iron makes me think that it's not all wool because um, usually pure wool will iron out really easily and nicely and this this does have some creases that I really had to kind of go out a little bit but I think it's looking good and I want to add a border my borders are attached and so now I need to think about how I'm going to expand from here and I have these bits and a bunch of these and a bunch of these so I went ahead and put them in the corners there, and I'm liking that. I think I'm gonna do that. But then I need to decide what fabric I'm going to kind of secure these on with. So I have two options I'm thinking about. I have this one that is this taupe with white little triangles. It kind of feels snowy to me. Um, and that looks, that looks nice, I think. I mean, that, that seems like it could go and it's, you know, a pretty big contrast between the taupe and the purple, which I like. The other option is this other fabric that I'm not as crazy about, but could also work. Uh, it's much more similar to the color of the border that I just put on, but I think it still goes nicely with these, with these blocks. So I'm gonna think about that. And what I'll do is create a strip along the side so I will, I will attach some of this fabric to either side of each one of these pieces. Same to this. So these pieces will get wider. And then I'll cut a strip for the middle. And then I'll attach this piece to this piece and this piece to the middle piece and the middle piece to this piece, this piece to the top. Do the same to the other side. I decided to choose this fabric. And so what I've done here is I've cut a bunch of two and a half inch wide strips. And each one of these pieces will get a strip 
on each side. There are eight of these pieces, so I'm just chain piecing them through the sewing machine. So I'm putting right sides together. So I have one ready to go here, another one here, and I'm just gonna put them right through my sewing machine, all eight back to back. And when I finish with one, I just put the next one through. And then when I have all eight through, with it one, at least one side on, I'll take my next side here, right sides together. You can see after they're sewn, we'll open these up. Uh, but this will now go through the sewing machine. So here's the second side of my last piece. I'm gonna cut these apart. I'll cut all of those apart and when I open them up, I'll have that. So I've made some real progress here. I added this thin border of green. I thought that that went nicely with these pieces that have kind of a green tint to them, but actually I'm not a big fan of that. So I'm going to seam rip this green border, take it off, and then in terms of these blocks, I have all my pieces cut for these borders. So the top and the bottom border are sewn together. And then the side borders will include this piece here. So what I'll do to create this side, I will sew this piece to this piece, one fourth inch and fold over. Then sew this full piece to this piece and fold one fourth inch over and go all the way down to make up this full side and do the same on the other side. Now, the borders are looking a little sad to me right now. They're actually not super exciting in my opinion. So I do have some thoughts to jazz those up and we'll talk about that in just a minute. I have attached all the pieces to each side of my border and then trim them to be a nice straight line on each side. So I've done the same thing with all four sides. These two are my longer ones on the right and the left. And so before I attach these borders to the body of my quilt, I want to zhuzh up the borders a little bit. They're feeling a little bit not so exciting to me and I have an idea about that. I should also mention that I decided to keep the green border on here. It's just, it doesn't bother me so much and I'd rather just leave it. So what I thought about for the borders is I have these pieces here and I grabbed four of these. I have lots of these, but I just grabbed four. And I thought what I'd do is I would put one in the middle of each of the borders. And there's a couple ways to do that. You could make a cut in this brown fabric and then insert it, but that's more trouble than it's worth, I think, at this point. So what I'm going to do is I took one of the borders here and I ironed one fourth inch down on each side. So I'm just gonna put this on top of my border and top stitch. So it will be a nice clean edge. Then I'll trim to make sure that it's in line with the rest of the border and then I'll attach it to the body of the quilt. So I'll do that with all four of these and we'll see how it looks. I think it'll be kind of cool because I have the, you know, quilting cotton here. I have this wool fabric. The green is a flannel. And then by kind of having this on top of the background fabric, it'll make it kind of sit on top of it a little bit. So I'll have a lot of textures, a lot of different textures going on. Um, and I think, I think that could be really cool. When I attach the borders on, I'm gonna attach the top and the bottom first. So what I'll do is flip this and sew right sides together, one fourth inch, and then open it up, iron it open. Same with the top, flip it over, so one fourth inch, and then I'll attach the sides in the same way. And there we have it so far. I have attached the borders. I've also attached these little pieces in the middle of these borders, and it's looking fine. Um, I'm not absolutely loving it at this point, but I think that's okay. 
So I'm going to stop here for today and then in the next video will be the last video of this series where we'll finish the quilt. We'll attach the deer blocks, which I'm really excited about. I think that the deer may be my saving grace in this quilt. I'm just, like I mentioned, I'm not loving this so far. There's parts that I really like. Um, I really like the middle. I think the middle came out really cool. Um, but just this piece as a whole, it's just not speaking to me and that's okay. You know, you don't have to like everything that you make and it's part of what makes the things that you do make that you love super special because something that you make and you're like, this is gorgeous, I'm really proud of this, could have come out really crappy. So not everything is going to work. But this may work. I don't know yet. I mean, even putting the binding on makes an enormous difference. I feel like sometimes I have a quilt that I'm kind of like eh about and then I put the binding on and I feel it and I touch it. I'm like, this is, this is great. Love it. So next video, we will finish this up. It will be revealed if this quilt ends up being kind of crummy or whether it's fantastic. So don't want to miss anything. So don't forget to subscribe and I'll see you next time. Bye.